Thank you, Hugo. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the big one as it's been billed. And of course, we need a, a special delivery for a special derby occasion. 136 years of history, a 254th meeting between these two. And a game the Bears can't afford to lose. So the match ball today being delivered by three Royal Marines to the teams. Five changes made by Pat Lamb for this one. They're short at hooker with Thacker and Ogre out of action. Will Capon, an experienced campaigner though. No Ellis Genge with England, of course, so Woolmore at loose head, Sinclair on the tight head side. James Dunn drafted in at lock and a first choice back row full of class led by the skipper Fitz Harding. In the back division, Randall McGinty continuing at 9 and 10. James Williams at 12. Vakatawa on the bench today. Noah Hewitt returning from injury on the wing. And Rich Lane comes in for the injured Max Malins at fullback. Bath are led by GJ van Feltzer today with Ben Spencer recalled to the England squad. The blind side is uh, accompanied by Miles Reed and Jako Kutsia, Alfie Barbary band at the moment, remember. Stukan Roo at lock, Charlie Ewell's drafted into that Six Nations squad late as well. In the front row, Tom Dunn returning at hooker after playing no part in the match in Toulouse. Louis Scroder in for Spencer at nine, Finn Russell still available crucially, but Will Butt starting at 12. Lawrence injured, a Jomo summoned by Steve Borthwick, and Matt Gallagher on the wing today with De Glanville wearing 15. Got on Ben, he made it up the stairs. Just about, a bit out of breath. But for me, the big matchup in the front row, can't wait to see Carl Sinclair and his opposite number, Dutoy, going for a big game, not only in the scrum, crucial part of it, just being that fulcrum of the scrum, but also their play around the field. Very, very exciting ball carriers, very good with ball in hand. And I think both sides are so finely matched today that it's really difficult to pick a winner. So I've gone for the game changers, two wingers. Ibatoy has been fantastic for Bristol in recent weeks really attacking and, and getting into those channels and staying alive with the ball in hand. And opposite him is Locking a Singer. This guy is a powerful animal. He will want to impress. Yeah, a couple of exciting wingers, lots and lots of great matchups and uh, excitement palpable inside Ashton Gate. Today, the uh, fan village has been overflowing, the music pumping. And a huge game, huge game for the Bears who are looking to raise themselves for a big push in front of this full house after a very disappointing Champions Cup campaign. Well beaten at the sports ground last week on Pat Lamb's return to Connacht and in the context of their premiership, it is massive today. Bath, as we know, in excellent form recently. Back from their Toulouse adventure on Monday evening. Only met up properly on Wednesday, so it's been a very short week. But despite defeat in France, there's been so many good things to draw from it. Ben, not just the round of 16 tie, but the, the knowledge really, I guess, that they can mix it with the best that the Northern Hemisphere has to offer. They, they really did run Antoine Dupont's side very close. Yeah, particularly that game last week. I know they didn't win it, but the quality of their performance gives them an enormous amount. Not only that, that they can do it in the Premiership, they can have big games, but like you said, just that, that knowledge that any team in the world now, they are a match for. And they can go out and go into these really challenging last few weeks of the Premiership, into the knockout stages in prime position. Emerging, Fitzharding and the Bristol Bears. You feel they'll need all their fireworks today. The result against Connacht left them with no European rugby in April, not even a Challenge Cup slot. And when you couple that with an eighth place in the Premiership table, a ninth and a tenth place finish in the last couple of seasons, you'll just get a feel for just why there's a little bit of unrest in these parts, Austin. I think this is massive for Pat Lamb and his coaching staff. I've never seen him give an interview like that before where he looks so stressed. You have to think that their season, if they lose today, is over. And that is a lot to take for people who pumped a lot of money into this place just as it starts to get going. 
so yeah, just, he will be um, very nervous. You're right, just six games left after the uh, the Six Nations window. It is a huge game, and they are under pressure to deliver. But let's hope we're in for a cracker here. The Bears have won seven of their last nine against Bath in the Premiership. It's been 15 years since Bath last notched an away win against Bristol and a couple of absolute screamers, real nail-biters in the last two between them. So strap yourselves in. Finn Russell getting us underway, Bath in yellow. If you can see through the smoke. Bristol keen on attack but loose inside their 22 and playing with some fire. The referee just choking on the court height there, but yeah, Bristol going ball out from their own line early on. We've seen them be, like, bit, be slightly more pragmatic this year. Not play quite as fast and free, but they wouldn't have wanted that first attacking move to have ended up in a mistake. This is crazy, Ali, absolutely crazy. They're playing against a side that's had one training session, get the ball off the field and put pressure on the line-out, because they haven't, they've lost their line-out caller, their main jumper, and now they finally, after five phases of pressure, and <laughs> the drop ball under their posts, kick it out to 40 metres. Nuts. It was an excellent clearance in the end, wasn't it, from Harry Randall? But a clearance I'm sure he'd rather have not had to make under quite su such duress. Here's Tom Dunn, who was arrested against Toulouse, sizing up the options. And it's Miles Reed who gathers it in. Here's Van Veltzer, who is the skipper today. Elliot Stuke. Second spell with the club, of course. Louis Scroder, who's in for Ben Spencer. Big loss at nine for uh, for this week only, of course. Now with England, richly deserved call-up. Reed is bundled in the tackle. Strong work from the Bristol Bears defensively. Crossfield, they go. Picking out Thokken, a singer, and he's shaken off one defender. Oh, that's weak from Ibitoye. Thokken, singer, scores. And really... The Bears have to look very carefully at their defence there. He's been in red-hot scoring form, but under no circumstances should he have been allowed the freedom of that 22. He shouldn't, he's got that much power. It's the width of the passing. Finn Russell stands so wide that he just takes out so many defenders. Look how many blue shirts are lost with two big passes. That creates the space on the outside. Ibatoya has to close That's in good, and narrow his That's defensive line. And then, yes, they should do better with Thok and Asinga, but they make their opportunities and they take it. Very, very simple play early on. This is brilliance from Finn Russell. Look at his body shape. He shapes to kick forward and then the last second turns to the outside of his foot. That means Ibn Toya immediately thinks he's got to cut underneath and defend the chip. Makes him two or three metres further away, but that is a world-class finish from Thok and Asinga. Well, he's been a delight to watch in recent weeks, hasn't he? I think one of those players, you can so obviously tell when he's enjoying himself, when he's feeling confident, the belief is there at the moment, and with belief comes tries. Hammer blow for Bristol so early on. They're 5-0 down, three minutes on the clock. If you see it from behind, actually, you just see the shape. So look at Ibatoya's body shape now. Last defender on the outside. Watch how he shapes his body, Finn Russell. Ibatoy's now stepping in, see the little step, the little stumble? He thinks he's going to chip it, so he covers, that's the winger's role. That makes him two or three metres away by the time he gets back to Thokken Asinga. Brilliant from Russell, brilliant from Thokken Asinga. What a start from Bath. Bristol would have felt really comfortable up until that point. They made some big shots defensively with the Bath forward carriers, but just maybe got slightly narrow. As I said, Bath looking to play with that width, with that initial pass from Schroeder to Russell. Sorry. Here's Will Capon. Bears suffering a little bit at hooker at the moment, in the absence of Thacker and Ogre, but a first chance to get on the front foot, and James Williams is taking that opportunity for Bristol, here's Bradbury battering into those yellow shirts, whipped away quickly, here's Stephen Luatua. Oof. Drilled backwards, lovely ball from Fitzharding this time. McGinter, Van Rensburg, very well shackled by Van Velzer. 
really good tackle from Van Veltzer. Van, Nancy van Rensburg gets on that outside, they're in trouble. Joe Batley lurking in the wider expanses of Ashton Gate, and Cam Redbath attempting the intercept, but uh, in the eyes of Ian Tempest, our referee. Yeah, it's worth a look, this. It's worth a look. Tempo going to show you the wide angle first, mate. Going to try and get you something from, from behind. Ball there, off. You can see there's a man in the backfield there. There's cover there, isn't there? Schroeder's in behind as well. Yeah. Yeah. Defender coming around, penalty only for me. Yeah, just and you've a penalty. Got a man in backfield as well, mate. Thanks. Deliberate knockdown, so cover coming round, no light break opportunity. A penalty allowing for McGinty to size up the corner. No light break for the defender. Yeah, it's just ensuring the comms are good. The line out has been going really well for them, and Lua Tua rises. And then drops, and Randall has it. Randall breaks, and Van Rensburg is used as the battering ram. Randall struggling to get in and release the ball. Here's James Dunn on the carry. Harding sets it up. Terrific noise inside Ashton Gate. Now James Williams nearly slips the net. Good tackle from Redpath in the end. Sinclair drives on. Four metres away. Advantage, off feet. With Don't a penalty off, advantage off behind them. Advantage. Lots of good options here. Luatua drives into Dutoy. And the blast on the Tempest top. whistle. Good set of phases oh. from Bristol. Had that momentum. Forced the penalty error from Bath. Good carrying. Again, playing with that little bit of width outside the strength of Bath, who are really, really big and strong defensively in and around the breakdown. So just playing that three or four metres wider, putting them into the softer edges and winning collisions, getting them on the front foot and forcing back Bath to backtrack and not be able to get that line speed they want. And a great response since the try from Bristol. Again, it's to Lua Tua. And the drive is... Looking very well set. Capon is ready to strike. Working his way around the fringes. Capon scoring. Just what the Bears were after. Hit early, recovering well. That's a great response from the Bears. A brilliant patience from the forwards. Could have gone down there. The referee said that it would have been Bristol's fault if it had gone down, but they just kept their nerve. As you said, great line out this year for Bristol. They get the initial shunt on as soon as the ref's arms come down, in come the cavalry from the back line. And Cabon just has, a, has his eyes up, has a little look. Just catches Schoeman, I think it is, just snapping there with his eyes up, not sure where the ball is, and he can't do anything. He's upright. Capon down in a good driving position. And they bide their time, they find a way over. Been a real strength for Bristol all season, hasn't it? I think that's their seventh ball try from the five-metre line this season. It's right up there at the top of the list. Did not deviate one bit, did it, from McGinty, but wide this time, five points each. Yeah, really good of Lua Tua there to be able to recover his feet well. He was reaching a long way back for the ball. They almost lose it there by spinning a little bit too quickly. But as Lua Tua goes down at the front there, they manage to shear off him, find that space on the blind side. Anxious day at the office for the boss. Needs this so badly. Here's Rich Lane on the gather. No, 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 don't go there, don't go there. In for Max Malins today at fullback. Harding. Ambition here from the Bears. Williams does well to get that away. Ibitoye straightening beyond the 10 metre line. Capon. McGinty. 
Williams, Van Rensburg, slip handling from Bristol and Rich Lane is away and the support is brilliant from Randall, times the pass quite beautifully and charging up and over the line is Joe Batley. A wonder strike from Bristol. Stunning score. The Bernard Janssen van Rensburg just delaying his pass perfectly here. Watch, he gets on the outside, but he sees Elliot Stuck outside. Make sure that Van Velzer has to step in on him, which means Stuck gets stepped back on the inside. Van Velzer can't recover, and then it's all about picking off numbers. Really good interplay amongst forwards and backs. Lovely kick out. And then that delay on the pass from Randall just to ensure the final defender's taken out. And Batley, great support gets his five-pointer. It's identifying weaker defenders, isn't it? They go wide one way, Bristol, and then when they're going back, they've got two second rows stood side by side. They do the best they can. But when you're facing someone with the footwork of Rich Lane, you're going to struggle if you're in the row no to stop him. No As they go back, look, there's just two guys. They stay well connected, but it's the early pass, step off the outside, and the acceleration through the tackle between the two second rows, and then the support and finishing spot on. The key there was Yancy Van Rensburg had to get past the tackler of Van Felzer because it meant that he then couldn't recover, he couldn't slide off him because he was running the block for him. Just that acceleration we saw from him to get into that gap, split those two big defenders Austin was talking about, created the opportunity for the step. Here's Bradbury, did well to hang on to the restart, grappling with Dutoy and Kutsia. <coughs> High, maybe from Kutsi, who was upright, wasn't he? We'll check it in the background. Good discipline. Williams. Really busy player in the midfield, very versatile. A great find since joining from Hartbury, where he was playing part time last season. Long clearance from Randall, finding Russell. Pieces on here. To Glanville looking to time his run. Yeah, a bit of blocking there Six from Fitz Harding. Yeah. We've got a foul play head on head from that carry initially. I've got foul play. Yeah, this could be bad. Okay, Rosie. Seeing it on the first him, angle. Uh, by uh, Bath eight. Head on head. His problem is he's okay, never. Formal, he's always head. upright. He by never Bath makes eight. any effort to drop his height. <laughs> It was one in the middle of the post, was it, Rosie, on the 22? Yeah, it was through the initial carry by uh, Bristol 8. OK. So here's the, f here's the first angle. It's face on face, is it? It's not much, it's it's not much power in it, is it? I think you'll be all right because of that. This one here. So there we've got the it's head glancing, head isn't there. it? So it's a wide one, please, Rosie, keep playing these angles. There's your wider one there, Tempo. OK. OK, Rosé, back to me, please. Yeah, OK. OK, Rosé, we do have a head-on-head. Head. It's um, high danger, but we are mitigating because the player's absorbing in the tackle, OK? So a yellow card, back page. OK. Thanks. Yellow for Kutsia. And Bristol, after that initial shock and surprise of the Thokkana Singer score, are finding themselves in a, a much happier place at this point. A man up, 12-5 I think they've got that spot on. Uh, he was trying to make the hit with the right arm. I think he thought that the player was going to drift on him and go on his outside, and he almost got done by a slight step back towards him. But as they said there, he did absorb the tackle. He didn't really follow through with it. Bit of a glancing blow. I think that's right. I think it's the lower end of a yellow. Like you said, the word glancing, they only just touched out of their faces. But it's about teaching people a lesson to drop their height, and he didn't do that. Cape on to Lua Tua, a little bit scruffy, but the hooker's onto it well. Williams, nicely picked up, one-handed by McGinty. That's a wonderful bullet of a pass to Rich Lane. Ivitoy is onto this one, hurtling after it. Across comes Russell, still there to be won. 
tidied eventually by Redpath, enveloped by McGinty. Bristol look a completely different team to the one that started the first two or three minutes of the game. Great pass by McGinty there, they're really unlucky, the ball doesn't kick out to the left, it kicks back to the right, otherwise Ibatoya would have been odds-on favourite to scoop that up. Done. Hit hard by Bradbury and uh, Wilmore in there too. It's a little high, he's got him right around the neck. And uh, Bath will have the penalty as a consequence. Here we go. High tackle. See what Messi can do with this. He'd be a bit worried about his defensive structure, actually, because they're getting broken way too easy. Look at the outside channel. They're just yeah, treading they're water. Settings. One wide pass means that all the guys are inside the ball defensively, so it's very difficult then for your wide guys to cover. Thanks. And then a good kick like we saw can put you in a lot of pressure. Really good recovery from Russell, wasn't it, just to get that left arm in there. Randall buffeted, extending to try to present the ball, but it's Bath possession. They've rocked hard over the top of it. Russell on the front foot, space in the backfield. Ibatoye chasing. And counter-attacking bravely. Lane to Noah Hewitt, who spills the ball. He did well, Hewitt, there. I know he's knocked it on and he's given away a penalty, but watch how he runs back towards the pass. He recognises the intercept is on. And instead of waiting for the ball, he goes back towards it. I reckon that saved them five points there. Maybe not immediately. We'll find out now if he goes to the corner. But if we see it again, you'll see him come back Decision at the ball. Please. Williams as well. Post called. Gives away a penalty. If he doesn't give away this penalty, the, uh, they could be in trouble. Was outside There's the, the spill. He picked up, not inside, mate. Just about half a metre outside if the 22. He doesn't pick that ball up, they're in real trouble as well. So probably one of those penalties the coach doesn't this mind you giving away. Thanks, Hewitt, who's uh, been starved of rugby over the last few weeks through a, a foot problem. Started the season really strong. Scored that uh, superb try here against Exeter a few weeks back. So, chance of points for Russell, all of them precious given that they're playing with 14 currently. No problem. Three added. Bath back within four. Importantly for Bath as well. Just take a few seconds off that yellow card clock. Slow things down. Take a bit of the sting out of what they've been thrown at by Bristol in the last five minutes or so. Gallagher. Van Rensburg opens it up. McGinty steps inside Reed, who clings on. Quick ball for Randall. Van Rensburg again for Bradbury. To the short side, Nibitoye again. Very slippery customer, a little bit lateral. Now he straightens, gets the offload away. Van Rensburg's there. Done. Williams, McGinty throws the dummy. Kept it alive brilliantly. Batley, one of the try scorers. Sinclair for Dunn, a little bit telegraphed. Bath have got to start putting more people into the breakdown. The rook speed's way too high for them to defend. There's a good example there. Malzwey can turn, spin, and make a nuisance of himself. Again, look, nobody in over the ball. The ball's just presented. From Rensburg again, Bristol growing in confidence, the offload to Bradbury, who's going to storm towards the line, prevented from reaching out, though. Bath, desperate here, defending with 14. Batley pops it onwards to Capon. Bradbury now... Lining this up with Luatua for company. Stooks holding on to as much of him as he can. 
Bradbury spins and is repelled. Advantage, roll away. Freebie, and they're really narrow defensively here. Bristol could use this. Penalty advantage, no release. Out it pops. Van Rensburg denied by two defenders, but McGinty will score by the posts. And Bristol continue their recovery from 5 0 down, three unanswered tries. It all starts with Ibatoria's carry, and he's been so good at creating offloads for himself. He knows when he's carrying into the final contact that he's going to offload this. No space here, goes back to the other side. Now he creates the offload, has a look up, gets the ball past and over the top to Van Rensburg. And then off the back of that, once they're in the red zone, that offloading game through the same channel. Bradbury does really well not to panic here. White line fever and try and score. Van Rensburg almost gets there. And then McGinty uses the post as a shield. Bath run out of numbers and they score another. Yeah, Bath in the huddle under the post there. They've got to be talking about how they slow down this rook speed. Because when Bristol get fast rook speed, they tear you apart. They've got so many good attacking runners. But that man can utilise. It's tough to know how Bath actually slow it down. But if you're the tackler, it doesn't mean your job's over inside that rook. You can get up, you can make a mess of it, you can lie on top of the ball. Not wasting the clock on the yellow card. <laughs> on the kick, please, time back on it. This is the Lua Tua reaction. Yes, OK. <laughs> I think we'll take that as satisfaction for the time being. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll learn a little bit more from Stephen Lewitour as the uh, the afternoon progresses. Just to be clear, he doesn't have a an earpiece in, for instance. We, we have access to everything that he is saying and talking about as McGinty breaks free again. Couldn't quite get that away to Ooh. Randall, but why is that the is answer? That is a yellow. Let's see it again. Let's take a look because a clear break is on here that's been denied. It's a clever break, isn't it? McGinty's brilliant with the ball in two hands, just making defenders step off him. That's a definite yellow card. Tempo. Yes. Have a look at the... Uh, he does slap it down. Uh, there's no attempt to try and catch it, just one arm and slaps it down. So, Rose, you tell me this is a bit knock-on for you? Yeah. OK. Got time off. Yeah, from that angle, it's a 100% yellow card. Scrotter it is... to the bin. And Bath down to 13 men for at least a couple of minutes. And Bristol have Bath on the ropes at the moment. There are some desperate decisions being made because their defence is being stretched. Yeah, and losing your nine as well, always so difficult to deal with. Not an easy position for anyone to slot in and play. Be interesting to see who does it, whether Finn Russell comes in, maybe Cam Redpath. Time on, deliberate knock on. So more pressure from the home side from this position now. But got to try and find those holes, find those spaces where those players might ordinarily be. as many as they can in the line-out Bath, just to try and stop this driving play of Bristol's, but now Reed just dropping out of the last minute to go and try and make this tackle. Capon on the peel, in behind McGinty. Disappointing outcome, but maybe they can recover it. Randall for Sinclair this time. McGinty, the kick pass, Heward is onto it. But uh, to Glanville covering well. Goal, goal it's just too far, isn't it? There was a lot of space out there, but he actually hooks it, hits it off the inside of his foot rather than pure. Just watch the ball turn over. It's a nice little setup play. It's a lot of space there. If you think that a bit flatter, you'd like to think there's been opportunity. Is it Lane in the wide channel? He's got a lot of tries this season, Lane, from those cross kicks. Yep, he's okay, um, thank you. Let's go. linked well yeah, ostensibly sorry. with Callum Sheedy. Yeah, with there was Sheedy, that great yeah. day at Sandy Park. He scored a a hat-trick, albeit in a losing cause. Capon again. Randall, McGinty, 
Williams from Rensburg. Lovely from Lane. Ivatoy again. Clatters his way through two defenders. Randall swiftly away. Harding, McGinty now, and tiny bit of space for Jake Woolmore. McGinty, Bath at full stretch. They're accelerating hard through Williams. Randall. Yellow shirts trying to keep up with the pace. It's very, very quick. Williams again for Bristol. Harding issues the instructions, goes himself. Bonus point try on the line here. Batley sent backwards. Bath effectively sitting offside here. Well beyond the uh, back foot of the right, but the ball is there in the midfield. Punched via a stray boot to Rich Lane, who links nicely, and Williams is in. And that is the bonus point for Bristol, after only 22 minutes. Well, it's the speed of the breakdown that Austin was talking about, but with one less body to defend, Bath can't put anyone in, and just look how narrow they have to get off these phases. So, Bristol know where they want to go, they almost cock it up, but the ball gets out there, there's patience, and Bath are always going to run out of numbers. Had to get narrow to defend the pick and goes, and as soon as they did, Bristol just wanted to get that whip over to that corner. Lane's got all the space in the world, kick doesn't quite get to him, but Heward gets the reward. It's clever play from Lane as well, isn't it? Rather than go to the outside, he steps back in, stops the defenders and waits for support to run round the corner. But again, I sound like a broken record, don't say every week, but if you allow a side so such quick rook speed, you're going to get destroyed. And Bath, for the first time this season, I've never seen them play like this. Normally, physically, they front up, they get stuck into the breakdown. They're not doing it today. They've obviously come with a message of, let's get a wide defensive line. You can't get any width in your defensive line if the rook speed is less than two seconds. Without wanting to offer up uh, excuses on Bath's behalf, just the one training session this week, perhaps the ramifications of, of taking on five times European champions the week before. Certainly it appears as a, a hangover of sorts. And then, and then when you do get a good defensive width, you can't get line speed if the nine picks and runs. So Randall picks, so then the inside guys, they can't come forward as quickly as they'd like to. And then third and fourth and fifth defender outside have to just wait ever so slightly. It might only take one or two metres off the line speed, but it gives you immediate width and a corner that's a lot tighter. He's very good at that, just bouncing out of the rook and breaking five metres out before he passes. The other part of the play that Bristol, who have played so much wide, wide Thank rugby last year, a little bit less this year, but they're so adept at creating that width by the little off-throughs through the middle of the field. You, don't, you think of the wide players, the long wide passes, but these little picks through the middle of the field shorten up the defensive line, and that gives you the width. See, that's better. That's the first rook someone's got over the top. Gone for the ball and slowed it down. Well, just a chance to, uh, to try to claw back a handful of points here and gain some sort of foothold. We'll have a word with, uh, with Johan van Graan in a, a moment or two. Four, five minutes. As uh, Finn Russell is asking the question about that second yellow card, I think. Could see her back on the field. Skroda still <laughs> missing. And the option is the corner. Such is the deficit they have to make up. Let's have a quick word with Johan van Graan. Uh, Johan, um, rock speed of Bristol. Lightning fast, how are you going to slow it up? Firstly, we've got to get 15 guys back on the pitch. Two yellow cards against Bristol in this form, you know, they're going to pick us off, so our discipline's got to improve. We started the game really well with that try, ever since that, the, the ball speed is just too quick. And uh, any suggestion, there's just a, a little bit of a hangover from Toulouse. You mentioned just the one session this week. Yeah, look, no excuses from our side. This is a long time to go in this game. We're definitely not going to just uh, give up right now. We're going to fight till the end. What's the plan from this set play? Well, uh, I'll tell you now after this. <laughs> yeah, and we'll let you go and attend to business. Thanks so much for your time. I'll tell you what your plan is. Don't get too much width. Keep it tied in here. Try and get over the line. They do. Tom Dunn is there. 
Bath badly in need of something. And the hook has provided it. That is the perfect, perfect scenario for Bath. They were really slow setting up. They took about two minutes off the clock. Then, with the first effort, efficiency, they get over the line. Little bit of movement from one way to the other. Dunn realises he's not going anywhere, breaks out, does really well to get away from those bodies in front of him, so he hasn't got a block and ground the ball. They just need to check that, does he knock it on? Because the ball gets dislodged. He, re he regathers it, but he has to regather it without it touching anybody else. So that'll be the question now. Further back. Yeah, so as he breaks through here, he gets in a good position. If you just watch it, <laughs> as the ball's transferred to him now, he breaks through, it just comes loose. No, he does he it touch the, the back, back to himself, doesn't he? And then he immediately breaks out as well. So there's no danger of him looking like he's rejoined. That's a really smart bit of play. And they half Tempo the deficit. Tries good, mate. Tries good, he regathers it himself. Yeah, it's That's fine. Have, so it's be yeah. Sorry, um, Ryan, what's that? No prouder bath man than Tom yeah, Dunn. He'd be delighted to have dragged his side back into contention. The conversion is good as well. And the scoreline a little different now. 26 points to 15. And just two more minutes before Johan van Graan has his wish. And they're back to a full complement. It's great resilience, isn't it? Because, let's be honest, Bath have been battered for 20 minutes. All over the place defensively, been put under huge amounts of pressure. But that is, as Ben said, the perfect way to respond. There were times last week, Ali, weren't there, when we were watching them against Toulouse, we thought, well, Toulouse are going to fly away here. They've got a, got a bit of a run in the game. It just shows that difference in Bath this year, that resilience to be able to ride with those knocks, see out those dark times in games and then come back strongly. Yeah, not least after that incredibly fast start in the southwest of France. They went 12-0 up pretty quick, didn't they? And Bath came roaring back. Kind of inbuilt yes. confidence that, uh, that victories can give you over a sustained period. Lane for Bristol. Met well. Play on, first man still. By Will Butt. First man. And the ball is taken in and driven onwards by the self-same. Away it comes to the short side. Redpath drops it on his foot. Ibitoye with the volley straight into James Williams, picked up by Redpath, who knocks it on. He's tried to Big move, turnover from Coates here Come in midfield the there. Really strong. He's tried to move I think there's the difference between the two sides here, you see in the wide channel. I don't think Bristol ever kicked this. It's a three-on-two, that scenario there, and you've got a very powerful winger in Thokken Asinga. You're taking the opportunity out of your hands and putting it into the defences. I'd like to see that go through the hands to the winger, wouldn't you? What about the uh, defensive volley? I don't mind a volley every now and then. I get a volley of abuse every time I turn up for work. Ben. All of it justified. Oh, steady on. Well, we know some, <laughs> whose team you're on. <laughs> Still plenty of time left in this half of after pull their way back from this 11 points. The yellow card has elapsed, so Louis Scroder will be back with us shortly. Tom de Glanville doing the scrum half duties in the meantime. He's done well there. Red path for Russell. It's there to be one. Tapped on its way quite brilliantly by Heward. Rich Lane on the outside. Thocken Singer tracking him. Still Lane drives to within five metres. Quick ball here could be devastating for the Bristol Bears. Away they come. Van Rensburg. Closer and closer to the line. The ball stolen by Reed. Under the instructions of the referee. Thocken Singer for Bath now. Another massive steal for Bath. They were in real trouble. Their Batley was in about 50 metres of space on the left-hand touchline. If they'd been able to get the ball across the, the wide expanses of the field, Bristol there, but a big turnover at crucial moment again. Lionel Messi a little bit better with his kick than his last pass. I'll tell you what, though, if you want entertainment in a local... Derby, they are absolutely getting it, aren't they? It's end to end. He does well laying here because he's covered on the angle from Thokken Asinga. The little hitch kick, maybe he's going to fend him. Oh, he almost gets away. But here's the turnover, Ben, you were talking about. They carry into the middle. They just drag him slightly long. And then the ball becomes exposed. 
they were short of numbers, I, t I said that, but you almost have to do that. Even though you're a man down, you have to stop Bristol playing, so they put three into that breakdown. Straight through the middle of the hole! James Williams celebrating wildly on Derby Day. It's Bristol's fifth of the match so far. The line that Williams run is brilliant. He slides from the outside, you'll see it from here. McGinty sets him up lovely, slides from the outside and appears really late. It's a simple over-under slice, through the middle he goes. He's got support running from Harding on the outside and distracts the defence. He's enjoyed that, hasn't he? It's great from Harding, isn't it? It's literally just a truck and trailer, and Finn Russell thinks Harding's going to get the ball. At the last second, William just, Williams just slides out of the shadows, as Austin said, and... Isolate one defender with two runners and make the right decision. Straight off the top, perfect ball, look right in behind him, now he comes out of the shadows. And because they go right to the line, the defender on the inside has to commit to the tackle. That's what creates the space. Yeah, I think Gallagher will look back on that and think he could have been a couple of yards further over, but when it's executed, a play like that, to perfection, they are designed to score points. He will be, I know he's not showing it, but he will be absolutely over the moon. Bonus point in the first half, 48 points scored. 32 <laughs> minutes full, gone. In a full house. Yeah. He can't have dreamt of it being like this. No, but it, it's sufficiently open that, that there could be several more swings before we're, before we're done here. You've got to remember there's still 50-odd minutes left of this game, and uh, Bristol are attacking again through McGinty, who's made a big difference. At 10 since recovering from injury, <laughs> pops it up on its way to Dunn. Okay. And Randall is again firing it out quickly to that shorter side. Here's Bradbury to Luatua. We're 1 2 with those two. Marching up the field, devouring the ground at the moment, the Bears. Again to the short side. Hewitt's pass is uh, oh. impeded, and that's a little loose and away into touch, but they're finding quite a lot of space out there. The it's a shame that because Luatua gets his hands free on. just as player on the outside. I think it's Bradbury thought, I need to go and support him. He's not going to get the offload away. It was a brilliant offload had Bradbury stayed. But they've, they've earned the right to take a few risks, haven't they? They've played so well and Bristol are a team that need to be taking a certain level of risk to play their best. Maybe at times in the past few years they've, they've done it too much, but they need a little bit. That's their USP, being able to do things other teams don't do in this league. And Velter, great delivery for Skruder. And a charging run from Jakob Katsia. Fred Davis is on the field, by the way, for Bristol for Will Capon. Been on loan at, uh, at Hartbury this season, his first Premiership outing of the campaign. Good competition, play Picked on. up by Randall, here's Dunn. <coughs> Big collision with Thomas Dutoy. Harding, neat from McGinty. And Ibatoya was recognising exactly the options. Couldn't quite latch onto it. Instead, it's butt for Bath. Say that was a pre-call move, it was really good. Just a shame it didn't come off for Bristol. To Glanville, to Reed. Takes two to bring him down. Right. Thank you. Clear out is strong. Scroder for Dunn. Russell. And Bath. Tackle. Giving up possession. <laughs> Lua Tua. I think Russell's just gone down, holding his head. Bristol are up and playing. Ten metres. A fantastic last move from Bristol, though. Yeah. <coughs> Just everyone thinks Harding's going to play out the back, then because they, they're going to play, play and play wide, okay. but you can see Ibatoya knew they weren't. The brakes go on from McGinty, just lifts it over okay. the top. If that bounces to Ibatoya, very so well could have been good night to Bath. But a bit of interest oh, around it? how this injury occurred to Finn Russell. Okay. At this present time, I've got a penalty for not 10 metres. 
We're going to wait for 10 to get three good. TMO was three. At this moment in time, the penalty to knock Took it right to the line, didn't he? And then got absolutely clobbered, although he tries to stop, doesn't he? He holds him and then it's not a deliberate drop. He tries to hold him in the air and they come apart. You don't want to do that. Streak has run onto the field and ran into the middle of the back huddle. That will not go down well. I think it's a streak, but it could be our director, Dan. It looks like he's very short. He's not on to his head or anything, but he puts it out to his back. So we know foul play? No foul play. Okay, thank you. Back 10, please, no foul play. It's been it's been swept. No foul play in the eyes of the uh, officials. He landed he landed on his back. I think Bradbury is actually doing his, his best to to bring him down safely. The um, you're not missing anything, by the way, as regards the streaker. He's disappeared back off into the stands. He's now being chased down by men in high-vis jackets. He great, might get away if he runs. response. Yeah. He literally got bored of being on the pitch and walked <laughs> off on his own. Also, it was a semi-streak. Yeah. Was it? It's very cold. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Really good work. Thanks. A half-hearted. How can you tell we're a long way away? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. Anyway, rugby happening, allegedly. Fred Davis with the delivery for Bristol. Randall breaks. He's been fizzing all game. Hewitt upended. A big shot coming in from Will Butt. And he's harding again. 12 odd metres out from the try line here. Bradbury, who's carried hard. Randall, McGinty, lovely from Van Rensburg and to Glanville having to hold on for grim death there in the tackle. Sinclair on the carry, battering his way forwards. And Bath withstanding that physical onslaught. Just about keeping them in it, isn't it, Bath? And maybe that's just a lesson. For Pat Lamb and ball. the Bristol players at half time. It's a wide open, expansive game. Don't get carried away. We still need to resource those breakdowns because it's the only thing keeping Bath in the game is these turnovers. It says it's the big point of positivity for Bath. They've had four turnovers, all led to something good. He didn't keep that in, he didn't stay on the pitch, but. <laughs> well they were they were so ruthlessly effective. Brian, thank you. First sort of 25 minutes or so when they got inside the opposition 22. Bath have just come up trumps in recent times in the red zone to, to relieve the pressure. You have to catch it, ball out, player out. No doubt who's looking the uh, the hungry and the sharper here this afternoon. Donald to Van Velzer. Red path. Russell lurking in behind and Fock and a singer waiting for his turn as well. Tackler first. Tackler, you want to compete? And Van Rensburg thought he'd done enough. Not in the eyes of Ian Tempest. It's good setup play, and I know Bath get the penalty here, but just from a, a view of trying to get better as a winger, watch Thokken a singer when he gets the ball. He just stutters ever so slightly rather than committing. The setup's nice, the pass is good, they create the space for him, but watch him just as he gets the ball. He just half stutters and doesn't quite back himself to go one way or the other. Because if he does, you're not stopping him. And big moments in the game, winning a penalty there, you need your 10 to put the ball exactly where the last penalty you had where you scored from was. Bang on the five, that's perfect out. kick. Giving Bath a real lifeline to go in at half-time, narrowing that score back again. Big moment you feel for the visitors and a huge steal from Magnus Bradbury. Happy with that, I'm happy. Less than two minutes on the clock in this first half. And Bristol back in possession. Randall's clearance. Very effective. And Bath back behind the opposition 10 metre line. Just poor quality of dummy. No one goes with Elliot Stoot, so easy to read. Elliot Stuke on his own, there's no back lifter, Bradbury just goes, well, I'll stay here and wait for the ball to come to me. Really bright game to this point. Magnus Bradbury showed up really well in the loose. 
Putting them on that front foot from where they've been able to play at such rapid speed. Bath got anything left in this first 40. Red path, the delay pass for Jako Kutsir. Alfie Barbary, of course, still banned. So we understand he's completed that tackle school, so he'll be available from today. Possible inclusion in an, an England A match. Kick pass from Russell for Fokker Singer. Ibitoye is on to him. The inside ball is good, but is brought down. No. James Williams makes the tackle. The ball is allowed to be played. Miles Reed smuggles it away, and Kutsia is on to it. Oh. White line fever. What was he doing? If they clear out over the top of him here, it is a walking yes, under the yes, posts. Yeah. So well initially, doesn't he? Little chip across, ball back on the inside. Then Coates here initially does so, so well, but as Austin said, huge overlap on the left. Tackled, knee to ground. Was he held? Well, the question will hang in the air through half time. The whistle has been blown. And the end of a breathless first 40. 48 points have been scored. Bristol with five tries after going 5 0 down that early. Thuck on a singer score. Capon, McGinty, Hewitt, and Williams. The Bears leading at half time by 33 points to 50. Very open, adventurous. And you would sense plenty more twists to come through the next 40. Max Laheef is on. And he's replaced Jake Wilmore, technically covering the tight head today. Max Laheef, but on at loose head in place of Jake Wilmore. The only change to either side at half time. And of course, those two yellow cards are a thing of the past as far as Bath are concerned. So 15 on 15. And a, a really interesting second period ahead of us. You, you just feel that, that Bath will be intent on making amends for rather too many holes in their defensive system in the first 40. And they have attack on their mind from within their 22. Will Butt, a rare chance in the centres for him this afternoon. Space on the outside for Thock and a singer. Tearing forwards, Russell on the gather, running a lovely support line. De Glanville is away from the despairing clutches of Van Rensburg. And just as they began the first half, Bath steaming out of the blocks. What a start to the second half. Finn Russell again with just a wonderful piece of messy magic to get it going down the short side. They set up playing a little bit like Bristol at the 22. It's a good carry from Butt, but then they decide to go short side again. Watch Finn Russell, catches it, pumps the ball, waits for a defender, and then he fires the pass across two of them. That creates the gap for Thokken Singer to accelerate. He just feel like he's running away from him, but De Glanville's got the pace to finish. It's just that disbelief that he throws that pass, isn't it? Because they're four on four defensively on that side when Finn Russell breaks, and he just flashes it across the face of everyone. Enough space on the outside for Thokken Singer to take advantage. And then wondered if De Glanville might come through onto Finn Russell's left shoulder there, but backed himself to pull away. Some good hair there. Some scousers supporting Bath. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, was a good finish. And there was one mullet flying in one direction. As he made a desperate attempt to stop to Glanville, but that has dragged Bath right back into it. Yes, they could have done with those two points at the end, but this is magic. It's McGinty on the outside, isn't it, that steps in, doesn't need to. They're numbered up. Bradbury's got off. Ibatoya's got off. Good straighten up from Will Butt. Every time he catches it, he throws that pump, doesn't he? Just moves the, uh, the shoulders of a defender, his own body shape. Maybe he is messy. Yeah. No. Oh, he can't take his free kicks like Messi. He's just <laughs> missed two conversions. And knocked it on. Off. This is loose. And Dunn is onto it for Bristol. Ibitoye, first to the ball. And this madcap match continues in similar vein. Sinclair on a short line. Driving hard into Schumann. Randall for Luatua. Keep going, 
Lahif, first carry. Sinclair again, busying himself in the loose. Tackle on it. Somewhere Please there's a ball. Bradbury, wide they go from McGinty, from Rensburg. One man to beat to Glanville, did so well. Randall, Harding, Williams, again using the ball so effectively, great leg drive as well from the, the centre, McGinty just holds this there, Bartley rummages on and they drive forwards through Fitz Harding, quite literally from end to end at the moment, Bristol taking a grip again, oh, it's just outstanding and it's all as we pointed out in the first half, to do with Bristol's speed of recycling the ball. Here's the knock-on, just behind Finn Russell as he's drifting back around, that's the turnover. But then a mixture of wide and through the guts, good tackle from De Glanville, but they've spread the defence well, and then it's all about the speed of delivery. Right. That one there from Batley to get the ball back as quickly as he can means Bath can't reorganise in the guard position. See, Dunn just come out, he's backtracking, he's got no power to be able to stop that drive, and Harding goes over. We have got until a restart, lads. <coughs> yeah. We do have until a restart, lads. I'm just looking at it, uh, John, it one of the clear-outs. And McGinty adds two to take Bristol into the 40s. And the skipper's on the score sheet. I'm just waiting for this play, and you've got to change. The time off, please. I've got to change and a head injury. Oh, it takes it half to the line. Little show and go from Williams. All right, subs complete. Just Is it this clear second. out they don't like? Nothing wrong there. Injury. Good carry here from Batley. No problems. Anything okay. wrong with that? Thank you. No, that's fine. OK, Rosie, game continues now, yeah? Nothing clear. Time on, please. Yeah, they're all cracking on regardless. Oh. Short restart, this one from Backwards Russell. De Glanville on. got up, but Batley was there, and here's Lua Tua. The big fend on Reed. Archie Griffin has come on at tight head for Bath, and yeah. they've won a penalty oh, you, just outside the 22. Hold in. Milo. There's this time refusing to release, so Bath can turn the screw. Yeah, good kick as well. Just wanted to see the breakdown again. It's a good fend. You've got to go for the ball. You can't go for the body. Does he get the ball or the hand? Yeah, he gets the ball. Yeah, it gets the ball. And the hand. The hand's OK, because yeah. he's holding, the, holding on on the floor. He's, he's made a release. You just see quite a few players now going for the forearm, lifting the forearm to bring the ball back into reach for them. First job for Bath is to get a try bonus point. Advantage, early drive. What a free shot here. Stokes gather, done on the rumble already. One try today, denied this time. Randall and Luatua combining in the corner. Brilliant from Luatua. He had to break out for his first try. He decides here he's got to go again. Is Luatua back on side though? I don't think he gets to an onside position, which this, if they look at this, it could be a penalty try. No try. We have a penalty advantage for early contact. Can you just make sure it's not a try, please? Yeah, OK, just going to have a look now. If not, we've got a penalty from the line yeah. early drive. I, I think Lua Tua never gets onside before he yeah, makes the tackle. Well. That's what the TMO's just checked there. See number six there. It's close. Comes the side as well, tempo. He's the man who makes the tackle. I think it breaks out yeah. before he makes I'm contact. A high shot of where number six blue comes from. This shot here, yeah. you can see as the ball spins round, yeah. he comes out. Now look where he comes yeah. from now. No, I and think he you're right, Ben. The tackle on number two in the end. From that's that a angle, it's a bit more evident, isn't it? It's a penalty try. Angle you have for this, please, for entry. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. Because if he gets back around and tackles the ball carry from the back foot, well, I say tackle, but his entry. Um, Just bear with me, Tempo. This is one angle here coming. Mm. 
So I'm going to show you this one. This is the best one, Tempo. This is the best one. We can see number six, Blue, look to the right. He definitely, he's the player that stops it. And he enters while Miles Reed is still those, those the furthest the forward. That's the best you can see his actions tempo. Okay, this is the last one. So what we're trying to establish, the back player who's in front, has he broken off? Is he still part of the mall? So as we... He's still same part of the mall, ball. Same mall. I think it's Reed. Is he still bound? And the entry of Stephen Lewis to it, yeah? Yeah. Rosie, I'm not seeing this as clear, would he? So I'm going to stick with... Rosie, this is no try, I presume? Yeah, no try. So I'm going to stick with the early contact at the line out. OK. So, no try. And we're I can see the argument. Early contact at the line out. You know, For he's me, a ref. Reed isn't fully bound, so he's outside the mall, limited to a legal entry. Yeah, it's just, it's just a little bit too messy for, for clarity, wasn't it? Well, we're all saying that the TMO should only be used to come in for clear and obvious, and that's the referee's decision. <laughs> I disagreed, but I've got no problem with him making that decision. So a little bit of a let-off for Bristol, but they're still under pressure here. Van Felser has leapt highest for the line-out ball. The counter-drive is strong from the Bears, and Sinclair's right in amongst it. And they've thwarted this attack seemingly, but away it comes. Fucking a singer driving back in field. Schroeder, done. Bradbury has to break away. Here's Miles Reed spinning through the challenge of... Kyle Sinclair, who goes back in for more. <laughs> Done waiting. And driving really hard with Will Budd in behind him. Dutoy now, who's been so devastating from close range this season. This is Griffin, fresh from the bench. Cuts here. Looking to ensure that ball is still basked. Tom Dunn again, the intent on doing this the hard way. One more drive from Kutsia, tries to spin. Has to turn back. Stuk, just a metre out, not even. Detoy. Again denied. In comes the long arms of Joe Batley to make sure, that at the very least, the ball is slow. Let's see it. Has made it! There it is! A feeling of inevitability after so much sustained pressure. And it's there, finally, for Bath. That patience again on the line. <laughs> Eventually, all they need is one tackle, not quite to stick. Then you'd be able to regenerate with a little bit of extra leg drive and coach here and do toy between them. A potent force, and eventually they get to the line. And it's coach here that dots the ball. Ooh, does he dot the ball down? That is held up. That's not down that yet. Is held up. That might be down now on the other side. <laughs> Tempo. Yeah. Oh, here we go again. Ball on the ground there. I've got the ball on the ground. Rosie. Okay. Yeah. No worries then. Okay. If you've got that, that's fine. Well, the try stands, and it's their try bonus. This one Time for off, Bath. Please. Great effort from Harding. The arm clearly under there, but when the referee came round, he said he could see the ball on the ground. He's in a great it's spot, isn't he? It's not down yet. We can't see from there. I think the officials have worked well today as a team. I have the ball on the line, that's not conclusive, there's pl clearly players over the ball. No, no, I'm just waiting for him, mate, contact lens. 67 points. <laughs> we'll see that's still got half an hour to play. That, no problems, I have the ball on the line. So it's not clear. I don't think Pat yeah, Lamb will be tip, resting easy seen, right mate. now. Just every time they squeak in front, back come Bath. Time on, please. And they've, they've got this record that suggests the final quarter is a tricky one. Can ball. you imagine? Okay, not now, They've got to not back now, themselves, though. They've got to keep playing the, the way that they have, because when they do play that high tempo, ways. Bath are struggling to live with them. So keep playing the fast Taking phase in. play, keep attacking. Get the ball Taking into McGinty's in. hands as much as you can. Squirrel's box kick, diffused by Rich Lane. 
the Heath. Escapes the clutches of that first set of defenders. Now he's almost through. Swallowed up eventually by Archie Griffin. McGinty attacking again, right to the line. Ibitoye off on one of his wild excursions, but so powerful in contact. Randall, McGinty, Luatua, Bristol purring now. Harding close. Randall fires it out. McGinty ducking and weaving. Fred Davis. Bath bodies throwing everything at this, but they've made it again, Bristol. The tit for tat continues. And Magnus Bradbury has try number seven for the Bears. Fitz Harding so important to this try for the Bears. Really nice play again. Ibatoya working off his wing, causing all sorts of problems, straightening up, beating Van Felser. This is the initial break from Lahif, does really well to leave so many yellow shirts in his wake. And the ball goes wide, Ibatoya works off the wing. As he's done so many times today, takes out four numbers, straightens up, does really well to get through two tackles. And then Fitz Harding's line off Lua Tour initially was brilliant, and then he picks and goes there, bides his time, offloads, and creates a one on one opportunity for Bradbury to get the ball down. Can we do this every week? Defending optional. It's bonkers today. Oh, isn't it? Great game. <laughs> 20 points, the difference now between these two. So let's bring in Pat Lamb, the Bristol Bears director of rugby. Uh, Pat, uh, I'm guessing you're still shifting a little uneasily in your seat just simply because the way this game is unfolding. Yes, you've got a big buffer, but there's still half an hour to play, bad and sake, so many points. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's about what we can control. And the number one thing we talk about position and we put a lot of work and talked about, you know, if we can, we can secure and look after our ball and get quick ball, then we can play our game. And that's been a big focus for us. And if we do that, we don't get turnovers. But obviously, you know, I think most of our turnovers have come up with just mistakes like that or giving away some penalties, so, but hey, no fear, keep going. Keep going, yeah, that has to be the message, doesn't it? I mean, at no stage will you just try and defend this this big lead you've built up? No, we talked about that at half-time. We said, look, we've got to have alertness and some emotional investment into our defence because we said they'll run it from straight from half-time and, you know, a couple of guys got their uh, their reads wrong and they broke out, but we said it's coming and when they scored, I just turned around to the coach and said exactly what we said was going to come. We just didn't deal with it, so... Um, but the message was go at them again, um, so... Uh, yeah, so we talked about 0-0, keep coming at them and stick with the plan. That let's uh, try and control our ball, quick ball, and come at them. Yeah, you, you mentioned that, that the quick ball focus, the rock speed today has been devastating at times. Yeah, we put a lot of work on it, uh, particularly this week. You know, we looked at all the bits and pieces. There's one area that we wanted to tidy up. Let's get our ruck speed up, and then everything else will take care of itself. Lovely, Pat. Thanks for your time. No problem. Cheers. Bath on the attack again. Niall Annette has replaced Tom Dunn at hooker. And the line-out ball is good, and so too the drive from Thokkana Singer. The target set, Skroder, nice deception there as they headed to the short side, worked it to the open side, and now they're bearing down on the try line again. Dutoy. Lahif and Dunn doing their level best to stymie possession. Advantage offside. It's more a little drive, Chris Clute is not too far away, he's come off the bench now. And it's Bath ball. Offside. Oh, it could, be, could be a yellow card, that. Offside. Scrudo looking okay, to the ref. Can, you're not going to scuff him, no? Offside. If it's a clear, cynical infringement, he can come in, OK? So it's a penalty for offside, I have. 18. Just a couple of poor decisions there, Dutoy. Picked and went on his own a little bit into big tra big traffic. Just need to make sure they get their decision making right. Bath in these high pressurised, tight exchanges. Some fresh bodies here. 
the ball has not been tapped yet by Kutzia. Here's Annett. Bayliss in with the clear out, another of those amongst the replacements. Here's Clute. 6 2 split on the Bath bench this afternoon. Bayliss wrapped up by Luatua. Really aggressive defending. Bath super narrow on that shorter side to the right. Just stocking a singer on his own to the left. But again, they think they're making mileage through the big boys. Bayless driven sideways. Clute thought for a minute about going aerial. Strong counter right, just making a mess of things for a moment, and Bath having to regroup. Bath are latching quite well. They just got to be careful that when they do latch, they don't seal off. They're getting away with two or three of them. And it a little bit of assistance from Will Butt this time. And Dutoy hammering headlong into those blue shirts. Now with a penalty advantage, Bath. Somewhere near the try line. Bodies everywhere and some spicy language in amongst it. Apologies for that. Sorry. OK, quick check as you are over the line. Yeah. It's on-field decision, no try, otherwise offside. Yes. And we want to put them on a warning for number offside. On-field decision, no try, Rosie, to make sure we haven't got ground in. I've got a penalty for offside, and I'm going to put okay. on a warning. OK, Ted Poe, just a moment, I'll have a look for you. Thanks, mate. Does his knee go down anyway before he re-propels himself towards the line? They had the penalty, so... Yeah, Not questioning yeah. an overturning decision here, but this will be the best angle coming here. Tempo, okay, it doesn't look like anything. Got any grounding? No. Oh, it's down. Oh, hello. It's down there. Tempo. Yeah. Stay with your on-field decision. Okay. So no try. Well, the last angle, it was Six. down. Warning now. Offside penalty. No more, please, in this area. Just one sec. No I, I agree, but I think the ball carrier's no, knee no, goes no, to no, ground no. and then he gets up and goes again without releasing yeah, yeah, the ball. Yeah, tempo, just hold it for one second, sorry. mate. Sorry, one, sorry, one sorry sec. Tempo, just I'm hold not. it for one second. One sec. Yeah. One more waiting for Rosie. We're just going to show you one more angle here, Tempo. Yeah. Just watch the other side of Chris Clute. Well, he hasn't there. moved, he hasn't moved. The ball's stationary. The ball that's a try. That looks... That, if that's down, that looks like it's over the line from here, but I'm going to show you back again, Tempo. Excuse me. Rosie, the We're question is... <coughs> Rosie. Yes, Tempo. Very clearly, the on-field decision is no try. So we need the evidence, the ball down, and on or over the line. If we don't yeah. have that, we stick with the on-field decision. Yeah, this is what I'm going to try and show you here, Tempo. OK, please don't try. We need to see it on or over the line. I think that's a try for me. It's over the line. Tempo, it's, it's inconclusive there, mate, so stay with the on-field decision. No try. Once again, sufficient grey One sec. Time is still off. Give me a minute, in the evidence. Time on. So Bath try again. Amit, head down. Detoy pops it up this time. And sheer weight and desire. Oh, held again by Bristol. Another big moment from Fitz Harding, just as enough to hold on to the ankles. A little bit of after, spilling over. No need, no need. No need. No need. Nothing's going to happen, let's move on. But Harding no goes low, you can see him at the front there, just holding the ankles, preventing that leg drive. Just as enough to hold him there. Well, it felt like a huge moment defensively for the Bears. 
digging in under extreme pressure. And it might be enough to just enable them to have that breathing space, which sounds like a funny thing to say when they're leading by 20. But the tries have come thick and fast today to the point where none of their supporters will feel entirely safe, you feel. Fock and a singer to Stuk. Bath with all the possession and all the territory at the moment. Kutsia. Staying on his feet so well. Skroda sniping, then to the boots, and out in front of Stuk. Well, Fokina Singh has tackled off the ball there before the kick's put in. Thanks, John. No, no. Like you said, it's a strange sense, isn't it? I know you've got That's... to defend your line, but it does feel like they're hanging on a little bit. Bristol eight, please, you watch as they come back to the Bristol short eight. side now. They get just tied up about what they're going to do. <laughs> nah, there's not much in it, really, is there? So another change. Josh Caulfield is on. Man who, of course, saw a, a red card brandished in his direction last week at Connacht. A decision that was rescinded. And he's come on to replace Magnus Bradbury. He's had a big game. Stay where you are. It's been brilliant, Bradbury. Really strong. A lot of the Bristol team have, a lot of the back rowers have on both sides. Coxie has been outstanding for Bath as well. Batley with the line-out ball, Luatura in a little bit of space, Bath just hanging off a while. Clute in over the top, to that's what Clute does them, which does give them, which potentially they were missing in the first half, that threat at the breakdown, and Bristol had so much quick ball. No, Alfie Barbary, of course, who's very good in that capacity. Yeah, they were uh, they were operating largely with Miles Reed in that jackal role, weren't they? But now with him and Clute, able to pair up. Reed, fired away by Annette so. Russell, no look pass. Scroder, Russell on the ball, Ibatoye's hands reaching he's out on that touch. occasion. He was away there, wasn't he, Ali? He takes that, yeah, he's here. gone. On the arm, on the air. I just think when Bath do start to chase it and Finn Russell starts to chase it, he throws arm, passes that he wouldn't normally throw. That's not a ball to throw. And if Ivatoya backs himself and takes one half step no, forward, he catches that and it goes under the posts. Instead, the Bath line out from 10 metres away. I suppose it was a freebie, so you have got the option to chance it a little bit more. Well, completely chance it, actually. Six. Just a reminder, they've had such a difficult time of it away at Bristol in the last 15 years. Not a single win on Bristol soil in the league. More. <coughs> and it's steering things here. Advantage, entry. Matt Gallagher has muscled in as well. They've got an advantage. Schroeder to Russell. Drives it through the defenders. Across comes Noah Hewitt. The ball needs gathering. It's really unlucky. I didn't get one. Just curved the ball back towards okay. the post. Really good Six threaded attacking kick entry. from Finn Russell. Aiming for Cam Redpath. Redpath just picked up a bang on the shin on the way through. Quite a lot of offences very close to the Bristol try line here. Which um, Ian Tempest will no doubt be taking an interest in. Just the three, please, change. Defence at the back from Hewitt as well. Change. Sam Graham Slaw onto the field. There are the the penalties all lined up. Come on. Carl Sinclair makes way. No Six Nations for him this season, but a hundredth Premiership start. Okay, let's go. This afternoon, and now an all no uh, all new front row for the Bears. And it's taken in by Dutoy oh, rather surprisingly, <laughs> rather brilliantly. Advantage. Another penalty given up. 
It's a yellow. To his pocket he goes. You want to compete, tackle is clearly wrong side. Your and choice. it's our man with the mic. Stephen Lua Too many penalties. Tackle not rolling. Tackle Eight competing. penalties in a row stacked up against Bristol. And Lua Tua pays the price. Be interesting to see what he says when he gets back to the bench. Just as long as the batteries hold out. We we'll charge him now. And at this time, a, a rather more slick routine with Stuke involved and the backs piling in. Gallagher and Butts, right shoulder. They can lose all those blue shirts if they straighten now. Good work. And it breaks away. Tackle made by Hewitt. Cluso with the clear out. Once again, it's this close range battle that may or may not define Bath's fortunes this okay, afternoon. They've had so much ball here. And yet again, Bristol have given up another penalty. Is he going to give another? Another warning, is it? OK, if the Jackal is insisting on competing, Tackler has to be out the way. If we continue like this, someone else will be joining them in the bin. Have a chat, have a chat no problem at all. It's a penalty for not, um, not rolling. I've given him a second to speak to his team. I've given him a second to speak to his team. <laughs> That's fine, yeah, he's given you a chat. He wanted it, Finn Russell. Anyone else remember that happening in the Six Nations? Sorry? They've had a yellow card already. You've got to keep your eyes involved. peeled at all well, times, but the these days, captains okay, are very clear, aren't they? They always check with the referee that they can bring their team together in a huddle, deliver the message and not get caught cold. On the whistle, please. I seem to remember Owen Farrell doing exactly that, though. Time on. Could see it. For Annette. And Fitzharding was having none of that. Not a great deal of deception in that, if we're honest. No, it just encourages the defensive line to move five metres further forward. Archie Griffin powering onwards, a man who was named in Wales' Six Nations squad and will link up with them after this match is over. Not before Bath have gone to work again from a metre out. Clute riding the challenges. Another surge, but this time... Van Rensburg is there. Annette feeds it back, and De Toy no. will take care of this with no. Bayless alongside behind him. De Toy's made it. He's the man for just those occasions. Time after time, he's the one who can find that precious extra metre. And Bath, after all that pressure, all that time, have another score, it's their fifth. Well, the toll of that pressure really worked on Bristol. You saw them a little bit slow into position a few times, and then just the deception from Dutoy. Just has a look up, they start to go, and as they back off, he uses that element of surprise, stays low, keeps his head near the ground, and just as the hit comes in, he extends the body, as he would do when he went into a scrum. Uses all that strength, no doubt about the try. Just having a look at the referee, maybe not concentrating. He loses the battle of the shoulders, can't get under him. And he doesn't really go forward that much, he just extends. And eventually the ball gets put down. Thomas Dutoy now with tries in eight of his last 14 games for Bath. Proved a, a priceless addition, not just for the... Uh, the rather more prosaic job at the scrum, but also in the loose and that close driving game, so dangerous. Ian Tempest just turning the clock off, Bristol walking back, know that Bath are edging back into this game, trying to take every second out of the clock, every second out of the yellow card clock, but referee having none of it, and the clock starts when the ball's kicked off again. It's now officially the highest scoring match of the Premiership season to date. Just the 81 points. And Russell wants more. Unsurprisingly, De Glanville. Caulfield with a strong counter drive, but eventually bundled away. Bayliss, Russell once again. Good line speed from Fitzharding, he's stolen the ball as well. 
from Thomas Dutoy. First turnover of the match so far for Bristol. Van Rensburg. It finds Stock and a singer. <coughs> big tackle, really big tackle. Coming in from uh, Max Laheef. He just wondered about the way the, the body found its way to the turf, but Ian Tempest was there and was ready. Another penalty goes against the Bears. What did Pat Lamb say? We just need a bit of board possession time. We need to look after it. Stop feeding this bath monster that's coming back at them. Well, the, uh, the discipline is, is a real issue for Bristol at the okay, moment. Ten off. penalties consecutively conceded. Seven plays, and 12 is on his way. McNally on the field, replacing Miles Reed. And Virami Vakatawa is with us. James Williams makes way, he's had a, a really strong game and of course scored a terrific try as well, but Vakatawa will try and bring his international class to proceedings and see the Bears home. Red path, but not far away from breaking free. Clute. Brilliant. Brilliant bit of work from Russell. Now a step from Kutsia. Two He's men released. to bring him down. He's released. Bristol all over the place defensively. To toy on the carry again. Tackle. Strong work from Graham Slaw. Fired away by Car Smith. Come on at nine for Scroder for Bath. Still plenty of time to pull this out of the fire. Griffin on the carry. Away they go. To toy again. Has he grounded the ball? This is close. They'll have to just check whether he didn't hit the floor and bounce back up. Penalty for offside, and is that player the offside player who stops the try from being scored? Okay, Rosie, quite a bit to check here, mate. So, on field decision is no try. We believe the player who makes the tackle is then in an offside position. So, we're just seeing where we're going from that. So, check grounding first, and then we'll unwind it. Okay, Tempo, we'll check the grounding first then on that. I'm checking, yeah. Here, here comes the ground in first. It's a try, isn't it? That looks all right, isn't it? It's going to show you another angle now, yeah. Tempo. Down there, That's try. Sure. Unless they're going to go down, with the same. On field, no try. Going to get the first angle again, Tempo, because yeah. none of those are really conclusive. Yeah. Okay. This is the best angle tempo, that one there. Okay. We're just going to go it backwards and forwards, Take tempo. Take time, Rosie. I think the other angle is slightly better because you actually see the ball hit the grass. You tempo, yeah. it's a try. From that picture there, I can't see the ball, he's on the ground. So you can't conclusively see the ball on the ground? No, because his, his right arm is in the way, so I can't see the ball. The other the angle ground. that we saw so does actually see the ball on the ground. OK. The tackle. One more here, Tempo. It wasn't that one. We saw one from further away at the pitch. Yeah. That's no space. This is the last angle here, Tempo. Okay, that's fine, Bozo. down isn't it it is but they can't see it because there's always a limb or a boot in the way but they're gonna have to see it because the question down, is no, no try yeah, tempo, unless I you can overrule it if you see the ball on the ground okay, so is the offside now then please yeah we'll do so much to unpack such a very busy day for the officials here comes a wider shot tempo so is that player yeah this so is the player that comes from out to in who makes the tackle <laughs> so so it's going to be a penalty try and a yellow card. It's a much better outcome for Bath. Well. Show me again, Rosie, please. I want to see. Going to show you again, Tempo. It's quite a big decision for us. Make sure we take time. Yeah. Here, here it comes here, Tempo. Yeah. Clear rock. That player is clearly offside. 
And that player outside is also clearly offside, number 14. That's right, number 14. Okay. Well, see, I know there's another defender there, but if 14 doesn't do what he does, for me, a probable try would have been scored because he would have scored further out. Yeah, so, agreed. number 14 is going in the bin, and it's a penalty try. 14. That is a huge no, decision, given the clock and the situation on the 14. scoreboard. Hewitt goes Outside. to the bin. 14. And they are down try. to 13 men. And seven points are banked by Bath. Six points in it, and so long to go. Wow. Oh, stunned crowd here at Ashton Gate. Huddle from Bristol under their own posts, taking their time. Referee turns the clock off again. But. Two in the bin for Bristol for another four minutes, four and a half. Well, a team that haven't had a lot of confidence in the final quarter this season now have to find some resilience from somewhere. A full house making its presence felt and its opinions too, for the most part. Big numbers of Bath supporters here, of course, the short journey, but a huge Bristol contingent. And having seen their side go 33-15 up and 47-27 up, they could never have dreamt that they might actually lose the match. It's a very real possibility now. Bath want to keep the tempo, they want to keep playing. They've got a two-man overlap. Redpath on the carry. And some lovely handling, Griffin does well, and it's to Thocken a singer and the flag is raised. And the atmosphere is febrile. It's going to stay on the field, haven't you? Archie Griffin's had a good game since he's come on, hasn't he? His carrying has always made positive metres, always seems to be in the picture. Looks like a real positive for the future. He needs to shave the, that uh, moustache off, though, doesn't he? 22-year-old, only made his, uh, his Premiership debut last season, sixth outing in the league, uh, making a name for himself pretty quickly. Certainly catching the eye of Warren Gatland. Fred Davis's line-out ball, Bristol could really do with a settling score. But they're two men down. Don't change! Three goes! Get out three! Randall. Vakatawa. Caulfield. Bristol struggling to bounce back into position. All their four was off their feet. Look, they've run out of options. They've got a penalty, which is a huge let off for them. The first time the arm has been raised in that direction in an eternity. Don't do it's that, please. Trapped in. Don't do that, what you did over there, please. Okay. On screen. All the way. Ball placed back it's into him, I think, postal. just to accentuate it. Uh, sorry, tempo. Accentuate tempo. Lost it. Delay screen. You've lost your delay. Okay. And yeah, then you're trying to get it fixed. No McGinty deciding to take a bit of time off the clock as much as he can with this kick and try and get the scoreboard ticking back in their favour and bring up the 50. Wide it goes, and they still don't have that breathing space. Bath still within a converted try. And looking for depth. Oh, wanting the tempo. He needs oh, no. to sit down. Oh. Another crazy development from the restart. He's kicked it dead. Have we moved into a rugby parallel universe here this afternoon? Bananas. 
seconds. It's absolutely bananas. Oh, you could see what Bath were trying to do. Get the tempo up, this Bristol side flagging a little bit. 13 men on the field. <laughs> and it's just gifted the opportunity back to Bristol, but when he kicks this, there's no way he thinks this is going all the way, but it just kicks on off the Ashton Gate turf. Lands just inside the 22 and given a helping slap from behind from Ibatoya. A playful smile, a rueful smile, but he'll have one eye on the clock at this point. Eight minutes to play. One of those yellow cards is elapsed. Stephen Luatu is waiting to return. Bath with possession. A scramble scrum and a scrum penalty to the Bears. But what? <laughs> Are we watching the same scrum? Well, what a moment for that. What a moment for that. Tatoi accused of going across early. Yeah, maybe he just snapped that left shoulder. He's on the outside, so... Always looks worse for the loose head. I think Max Laheef enjoyed it. Just a little bit aided and abetted by Bernhard Janser van Rensburg packing down on the flank. Last eight, tempo. Sorry. Last eight. Yeah. Going to use all 30 seconds that are left on the kick clock, aren't they? Absolutely right. Wind it back. They have 14 on the field. Another four minutes to navigate without Noah Hewitt. Thank you. This would stretch them very effectively. The 50 is up. And Bath. Now need two scores. Well, Lua to a back. Can they find some possession, Bristol, to prevent Bath reapplying that pressure that's been so devastating in this last ten minutes or so? Back inside their 22, where they've spent so much of this second period, Bristol. Worth re iterating exactly what this would mean to them to close out a victory today. It would enable them to at least keep in touch with the chasing pack for a playoff place. Defeat today, well, you've got to say, would be a very much an outside shot of that happening. They retain the ball. Awful lot going on today, Ben. Yeah, really big scrum this, though, I think. Just with what happened at the last scrum, the penalty against the toy, he's going to want to make amends. Bit of pressure on the referee. Obviously, Bristol putting the ball in, so they need the strike. OK, let's go. They need Davis to lift his foot, not be under too much pressure, but you know that Annett... Griffin and Dutoy okay, are going to throw everything at this, try and get that penalty back. Clean strike. And the ball is there for Randall. Or oh, isn't. Ball's out, play on. Just for a minute, it looked like Tom Carl Smith was going to get onto it. He might just have knocked the ball on there for a moment. No, no. Looked like McGinty knocked it on. He went to kick it, didn't touch his foot. Might got away with that. A lot of pressure at the scrum, wasn't there? Proper tussle for possession. Randall. Gallagher. Wonderful stepping. Drives it down That's the it. field. He's Bayless is there. after it. Ivatoya goes back. Not too many options here. 
keeps it in fields. Tempo got a late tackle at the kicker there, mate. Gallagher was definitely hit late there. Yeah, yeah the uh, yeah. TMO he's spotted the, he's it. the bath kicker, mate. And the kick passes, which will be a penalty five meters out from That's the try line. Ball lands, That's isn't it? Ball lands. Just get, the, just get the landing point now for your tempo. It's James Dunn, who just leaves the shoulder on him. Late charge on the kicker. Probably not a huge threat, but they need to see where the ball lands because that's where the penalty is going to be. Just steps, steps across, across him. Instruct him. One second. Time off. Back ten, please. It stops on the five meter. Okay, well, um, Rosie Moore. I'm just getting out for your tempo. Just inside the 22 on the okay. 15. Just inside the 22. Late on the kicker. Back ten on the line. Okay. Late charge on the kicker. About two metres inside on, the 22 you. in line with the, with the 15. Post call. Thank Good you, call. David. Take it back to within a bonus point, and you can still run the ball from your own line to try and trace that try. Have to take the points, though. He's missed a couple of conversions, hasn't he, Finn Russell, today? He has, they might yeah. come back to haunt him, but can he get these points when it matters? Stop it all day for that day. He will relish these moments. The big game player in him. Competitive animal in him. This to give his side a chance. Studied concentration. Three points banked. Still a sniff of victory. Not many people at the 26,000 leaving their seats yet, Ali. What a derby day. Jam packed. After 21 weeks of unbroken rugby, the final stop before a, a seven week break. The yellow card has elapsed. So Bristol have a full complement for the final two and a half minutes. Siva Naulango is with us. Okay, so yes. to Jake Heenan. Yeah, there's 16 on the field currently for Bristol, so one of them's going to have to leave. It's is it? Yeah, it's yeah, going to take this restart. Yeah, McGinty's off. Van Rensburg goes to the 22. Great restart. Claimed by Stuke. And Bath have it all to do. Bayless. Shut down by Caulfield that time. Russell. Red path. Noise levels absolutely deafening. Bears fans trying to get their side over the line here. It would mean so much to them. Bath chancing their arm 10 metres out from their line. Carl Smith. Clute <laughs> upended. Russell to the kick pass. Oh, it's landed in Bristol hands. It's landed in Rich Lane's hands. And the victory is theirs. A titanic tussle. Settled by one kick. Ending with the Bears fullback. Well, I guess you say Finn Russell has to make gambles, but gambles that take away your bonus point, losing bonus point. Is it on? Potentially doesn't quite get the, the strength of the kick across to Fucking a Singer on that side. And as soon as it's safely taken, De Glanville lost in the air, he can't play the man in the air, Rich Lane's going to finish it off. And a huge reaction from this home crowd that have been on the edge of their seats for the last 20 minutes or so. Well, we said that Rich Lane scores from crossfield kicks, but they're normally from his own team. What a fantastic afternoon we've had here at Ashton Gate, haven't we? We've had everything. And somehow fittingly, in the 80th minute, the Rich Lane try allows for Bernard Janser van Rensburg to notch up 
the aggregate 100. He's leaving it tight. Extraordinary. Still time for a restart. Oh, there is still time. Can they get the bonus back? Stabbed on its way, taken in by Bristol, who have control of operations now. Whipped away by Marmion, and Gabriel Libertoy sends Aston Gate into delirium. How badly they needed that. A Derby Day thriller in Bristol, backs against the wall, but a priceless, essential victory for the Bears. Back amongst the chasing pack for a playoff place and full time after four yellow cards, 14 tries and 101 points. Bristol 57, Bath 44.